Inger Britson. I can only assume he's feeling comfortable at the front now. And it's a matter of when he chooses to just lengthen that stride imperceptibly. He does it on the track. So often on the track, you see Inger Britson, and it's almost impossible to discern when he puts the acceleration in. But he just lengthens his stride. He's got a slight forward lean anyway, Hannah. And he just leans into it a little bit more, lengthens the stride, applies a bit more power, almost like just gradually pressing an accelerator very, very slowly, and he eases away from opposition. We've seen it again and again and again. He's the defending champion, and he goes out now on this final lap, 25.13 on the clock. Two athletes with him, a couple of others a few meters further back. But is the writing on the wall or are we in for the shock of the day? I was thinking there's no way Isaac Camelli and Emil Caress think they can outkick Jakob Ingebrigtsen. and don't care how strong they think they are, <laughs> how much of a cross-country strength kick they can. I hope maybe they'll prove you wrong. Uh, so I think Emil Caress and Isaac Camelli, they have to make a move now. If they don't make a move now, that, that would... That's what would tell me that Jakob Ingebrigtsen's raised his pace. If he started that sort of imperceptible squeeze that we see him do, um, I think if Emil Caress and Isaac Camelli don't try and get past him, then that, that slow, deadly kick has started. Well, these two, Camelli there in the colours of Belgium and Caress for Great Britain in third place, they have got now to prepare themselves psychologically for what's coming at them. And that will be a wind-up from Ingebrigtsen in his traditional... Ingebrigtsen, Norwegian style. He'll just turn the screw. Kripper, back in fourth place, is on a bit of a charge. I just sense that Kripper is sniffing a medal here. He's got that strength of a sub-60 minute half marathon. We know he enjoys the hills. He's been training in Kenya. He's in great shape. And that's not a big gap. What, it's three or four seconds to this leading trio. Kripper can close that over this final lap. Of the leading trio, Hannah, I would say there's only one person who will definitely get a medal, and that's Ingebrigtsen. But either... Kimeli or Caress could be under threat here from Kripa. It could be. Kripper does have that mountain running background. I've been really impressed with the descent every time from Philemon Abraham. I think uh, he could elevate himself a position or two if he can just navigate this uphill and downhill. Kripper's really got to go now if he's going to stand any chance of making it individually on a podium in front of the home crowd here in Italy. I just thought Emil Caress was going to falter and he's rallied ever so slightly. Inga Britson is not pulling away from Camelli and Caress. No pull away from Inga Britson yet as they negotiate this hill for the final time. Abraham and Kripa in fifth, in fourth and fifth, and Abraham has gone past Kripa. That would suggest that the surge from Kripa has maybe faltered as Inga Britson has a little glance over his shoulder. And there it is, that pitter-patter style of Inga Britson on this upslope. There's an acceleration there. It's very tough to recognise other than the fact that he's opening up a gap. And there he leans into that last climb and pulls away from Kimeli another couple of metres. And this is it. There it is, the Inga Britson gap, we should call it, because he goes through and the gap all of a sudden it's so bizarre. It's like an optical illusion. In the space of 20 seconds, it goes from 2 metres to 20. Inge Britson has gone. Now the battle is for the minor medals. Kimeli of Belgium, Caress of Great Britain, out into the sunshine for the Olympic champion at 1,500. The uh, world champion at 5,000 metres. And Jakob Inge Britson, surely, barring disaster in this next two or 300 metres downhill, is uh, heading for a safe retaining of his gold from Dublin last year. A little glance over his shoulder there, and it's yet another gold on the way. And Jakob Inge Britson's got time to encourage the crowd to cheer him on. This will be his ninth European gold medal, his sixth successive gold medal at this European Cross Country Championships. He is number one. He does have time to celebrate and wave at the crowd, and he deserves it. This hasn't been an easy race. The winning margin will be quite definitive in the end, but Jakob Inge Britson has had a race on his hands today. Well, we thought he had a race in his hands today, Jakob Ingebrigtsen, but ultimately the result is the same as ever. Isolation into the home straight for Jakob Ingebrigtsen. A finger held aloft. Yes, you are number one, sir. You have retained your title. It's going to be gold again at these European Athletics uh, Cross Country Championships for Jakob Ingebrigtsen. A comfortable victory. He has eased away to about a 10 or 12 second victory from Emil Caress, who comes home for a brilliant silver for Great Britain. 29.33 for Inga Britson. Nine seconds, the gap backs caress.
and a bronze medal there for Kameli. Kripper's charge couldn't quite get him into the medals. He's two seconds behind Belgian Isaac Kameli. He's just outside the medals. But Jakob Ingebrigtsen, yet again, quite sublime, makes it look relatively effortless when the chips are down on the final lap. Well, he won last year by 14 seconds in Dublin. He wins today by nine seconds. Jakob Ingebrigtsen answers on a postcard to how you beat Jakob Ingebrigtsen. One lap to go then, and Kloster Halfen has been applying the pressure for the last couple of minutes. And I think, Hannah, that uh, Grovdal is hanging on here. The, the brow is furrowed. She's not up alongside the German, letting her know she's feeling fine, which is what do you do if you're feeling good and somebody starts pushing? You just come and look on the side and say, is that the best you got? You know, psychologically, maybe give them a nudge with the elbow. But uh, I think uh, Grovdal in second place. And I'm, I'm a bit surprised that uh, Klosterhelfen hasn't had a little glance over her shoulder to see what's going on behind. And maybe to get a quick glance at the features of Grovdal Ray has put in this fabulous surge, and Datka as well. Three Germans in four. Four Germans in six. Unbelievable. That, that is brilliant. I mean, Jess Warner-Judd at the moment, the best of the Brits, but that German team score is going to be infinitesimal. And that's, I can think, Grovdell has slightly got herself back towards Klosterhaufen. It does seem like Klosterhaufen is trying to drop Grovdale here. I, I still fancy Grovdale's chances on that downhill. I think she looked more comfortable um, and she looked more relaxed. So if Klosterhaufen is going to have to open up a gap um, for that downhill descent to be a winning, a winning kind of environment for her. Well, speaking of gaps, the gap behind that pair is massive. It's probably 150 metres, maybe more now. Their last uh, couple of laps have been uh, 503 and 503. The first two laps up the big full lap. Then they've just done on the third lap a 4.57. So a significant acceleration. That was all down to Klosterhelfen. And I get the impression the German there to the left, Hannah, is really letting rip now. This is the final circuit. They're going over this ground for the final time. Only the senior men's race to come. It's pretty chewed up. But Klosterhelfen here is really putting it on. And uh, this next hill will be critical. Both of them are good at running on the downhill. But uh, how will they cope with this upslope? eight and a half points for Germany at the moment that is an obscene team score and it does look like their holder Miriam Datka has got a got some athletes queuing up behind her but Alina Ray if she gets another bronze medal and she's spoken about those emotional difficulties she's had in that competition environment in the last few months I would be delighted for her and Miriam Datka does falter at all Hannah Klein will be there to pick up the pieces but I put in my notes that Carolina Grovdal she has improved since last year but has she improved as much as Constanza Klosterhaufen and I think that's what we're going to find out we've got around about three minutes three and a half minutes maybe left of the race this is that last Last big uphill push. You gotta go for broke. This is it now. Make your winning move. You gotta make your competitor hurt as much as you possibly can. Oh, a little stumble almost from Cluster Health and there pulls her sleeves up. I know she's getting too warm. Certainly our commentary cabin here, the heating has gone up. Somebody's turned up the heater for some reason in the last half hour, so it's sweltering in here. It's like a sauna, and we're looking out at countryside where it's about one or two degrees. But uh Grovdal up onto the shoulder of Klosterhelfen now. Again, she's just smoother, a little bit smoother on that upslope than Klosterhelfen. Everything to run here for now. I guess when you try and put them side by side on paper, Klosterhelfen is the quicker of the two. Quicker over 1,500, quicker over every distance. But uh, this is racing, and you can throw the, the form book aside in that respect. Oh, what a race we've got on our hands here. Constanza Klosterhaufen, Carolina Bakelli grovdale toe for toe as they come out of the indoor section. We think it's around about 470 metres from that point there. There's a school of thought for people that have looked at this course. If you come out of that building first, you are going to be first by the time you get to the finish line. But that really isn't what we've seen as these races have unfolded. Drama in the junior men's race. Nick Griggs just stumbling in the closing stages. Will Barnicut swinging right wide. Gaia Sabatini in the mix relay she took advantage of the final flat section what will happen between Constanza Klosterhaufen and Carolina Bekele Grovdale Klosterhaufen the track specialist she's got the foot speed but can you be strong enough to use it at the end of a testing eight kilometer cross-country course well, Grovdale hits the front once again 
She's uh, returned the punches that have come at her from Klosterhalfen with interest and kicked hard here. Now, she's no slouch. We've got to remember, Hannah, she was eighth in the World Championships, 5,000 this summer, the Norwegian. She's had a fabulous year. At 32, she's going from strength to strength, and she's easing away from Klosterhalfen now. And barring disaster in this last 100 metres, it's going to be Norwegian gold. Carolina Bakelli Grovdal waited years for her first senior gold medal at these European Championships. That came in Dublin 12 months ago, and it is a brilliant defence of that title. A second gold medal to Norway, and Carolina Bakelli Grovdal, Constanza Klosterhaufen, with one of her best cross country performances of her life, picking up a silver medal. What a battle between those two women. Hats off, and may we see that for many years to come. Alina Ray is going to come under pressure for this bronze medal. It's been a valiant effort from the German athlete, paced supremely well. It would be heartbreaking to see her miss out. Her training partner, Hannah Klein, the 1500 meter specialist, is gathering behind. Miriam Datka, the marathon specialist, surely she hasn't got one more kick. Salam Teferi of Israel. Does look like she might be lacking foot speed in these closing stages. Alina Ray, high stepping, kicking hard. She was the German cross country champion by quite some margin and she is going to hold off her 1500 metre teammate. Or is she? They're toe for toe at the line. Maybe, maybe Hannah Klein. Just <laughs> ahead of Alina Ray. They, I, I don't think that's a confirmed result there on our screen. From the naked eye, we're just at the commentary position. I, I perhaps think Hannah Klein might have nicked it at the last minute. We'll see. So I think Carolina Bakelli Grovdale with a really well judged defence of her senior women's title. Constanza Klosterhaufen, a great silver medal. Alina Ray, while well, you talk about well judged races, that was a fantastic one, just holding on to the bronze medal ahead of Hannah Klein with a tiny score of nine points and the team gold to Germany. Great Britain with the team silver and Ireland with a great bronze. And this race, while it is only 8K, I guess because of the hill, you could you could say that sort of factors in more distance in a way. It makes it more like a 10 or 12k race because the hill really does suck your strength. I think you're right, Tim. It's not as simple as just an 8k race because it is so so tough. And uh, Zach Mohammed, that's a really aggressive move again from the Briton. He knows Charlie Hicks was the favourite, and he's doing everything he can to keep pushing. That's a big move through from Guardia of Israel. If that graphic is right, we haven't seen him so far in the race and he has made a tremendous charge through the field. The Israeli junior men picked up a bronze medal last year. That gave us a bit of a preview of what they might be capable of as a nation. Yeah, Adesu Guardia of Israel, the 20 year old who was a junior team bronze he garnered last year at these European Cross Country Championships. He's a 348 1500 fella and uh, just looking back in 2019 he was 35th in the junior race 11th in the junior race last year so he's a, a growing force and he's judged things nicely the 20 year olds moving to the top three or four places but i'll tell you what i'm impressed here by zach Mohammed's determination to give charlie hicks a tough old time on this last lap because that's what we're on great britain on 10 points now france 15 and a half ireland a fairly distant third at the moment but comfortable ahead of israel uh, so on the rostrum at the moment the, the uh, irish court the irish team when we were moving through the field with that graphic darren McElhinney is still in the race he's dropped out of that scoring three for ireland they've been led by ifram gide shay mccoy mccovey and keelan Carahill. i think that's the irish trio trying to push themselves towards france but look at that you can see three french vests two right up there with ifram gide island's top scorer uh, can great britain and northern ireland hold on to the team gold with charlie hicks the defending champion moves to the four again they're having quite a dust up these two they've swapped the lead three or four times in the last three or four minutes there's a battle royal going on for the bronze medal that's a quartet of vests as they uh, come into the hill for the last time. Now, can Hicks get away from Mohammed here? He probably has better speed than Mohammed, better strength than Mohammed on paper, but I love to see it when you have to rip up the paperwork and just watch racing unfold and you, you can't predict it. Uh, Zach Mohammed has got a target, and that's uh, on the back of Charlie Hicks's vest at the moment. 
I want to say Charles Hicks, he, he's looked good every single time we've come up these hills. He has looked relaxed. Zach Mohammed had to go down in the flat, se flat section in the field. Uh, for me, Mohammed's got to feel a bit, little bit demoralised now. It was like he tried to drop Hicks before they got to this hill because uh, Charles Hicks is just, for me, getting half a metre, a metre every few seconds ahead of Zach Mohammed. I do think that's a winning hill sprint there from Charles Hicks. If he can just stay on his feet down the sharp downhill, because that is certainly not a given. Through the Castella de la Mandria for Charlie Hicks and Zach Mohammed for the final time. And he's got the daylight now that he's been searching for for the last 10 minutes. So is Charlie Hicks. There's a real bounce as he leans into that left hand turn. He's a beautiful looking runner, moves well. Zach Mohammed has thrown everything at him to try and break him and has done well to hang on to him and actually been dragged well away from the pursuers. He's surely a shorter, a uh, silver medal now. But Charlie Hicks just uh, skits around that left-hand turn, the most awkward point on the course, in fact. We've seen one or two fallers there. It's going to be one, two for Great Britain, barring disaster. Brilliant running. Is this Bresque in third place? It is Valentin Bresque of France in third place. Dagino in fourth for them. They're in third and fourth. Then Ephraim Gide of Ireland in fifth place. Uh, Gide, very experienced at this level. But Charlie Hicks, the real deal here. It's great to see that form of the NCAA's Hannah here in Europe. That is a formidable uh, 12 months for Charles Hicks. NCA win a few weeks ago and now he is backing up his gold medal performance here at the European Athletics Championships. It is going to be a second gold for Great Britain. He had a glance over his shoulder there just to make doubly sure, but he celebrates as he crosses the tape. Charlie Hicks retains his title from Dublin. He said last year he was banged up before Dublin, wasn't in as good shape as he is this year, which underlines what a great run that is from Zach Mohammed to take the silver for Great Britain. This is a supreme run for the uh, Frenchman Bresque. He comes through for that bronze medal. That's not expected necessarily. 18 seconds down on the Hicks. The uh, Dagino, the second Frenchman in fourth place, and the uh, third French Vesta across the line just ahead of Mastonia. Is Mastonia the third British scorer? It's going to be tight, but I think the Brits have probably taken the team race very marginally. Charlie Hicks, then, the student of cognitive science at Stanford University, if you want the nuts and bolts, is the champion. His time 23.40. Put in just uh, eight seconds ahead of Zach Mohammed, his teammate who took second place. Great Britain taking the gold medals thanks to Max Stonia's third place, uh, third place scorer in eighth overall from uh, Great Britain gold medalists from France and Ireland. This is the site of lap now. They go through, locked together. The uh, there's not much let up, you know, I think because they've been swapping the leads so regularly, that indicates they're both pushing hard, Hannah, and that's why the gap behind them has widened up. It's always like Nadia Batakles, he swung wide on that bend. It's like a track race. Megan Keith seemed determined to get herself uh, back towards the lead. We can see Alex Millard, Grace Carson have pushed themselves ahead of Man on Trap. She was struggling up that hill. It's a really good run as well from Amina Matug of Netherlands. She was 21st as a junior last year. Has taken herself over to that American collegiate system we were mentioning. 28th at NCAs. So Amina Matug looks like one to try and stake a claim to that bronze medal as well. It's very, very competitive in that chasing pack. Well, there's less than 10 athletes within 30 seconds of these two. That's how much they've turned it on. Look at the gap behind them there to the uh, pack. Probably 100 metres down as they uh, negotiate this bend for the final time they're heading out on this last lap and Batacletti has the bull by the horns I just get the feeling she's psychologically as much as visually as well from what we can see there wrestling control from Megan Keith who I'm not sure if she's hanging on but the Brit is two or three meters down now is that gap going to widen this hill for the final time will be very important it will be really showing I think Nadia Batacletti won the race up the hill on the previous lap she did push through the flat section and then Megan Keith managed to get back on terms on the downhill but if it was going to come down to a sprint finish you'd have to look at Nadia Batacletti she's got that track speed 1446 seventh at the Olympic Games um, in 2021 and I think we can start to see what could be a definitive gap opening up Megan Keith just starting to grind it out a tiny bit as she looks over her shoulder, she'll see some great performances from her teammates. 
Well, the team standings after three laps, Great Britain, Italy and France, Spain in fourth, Germany in fifth, Great Britain outstanding with the lead they've got, but outstanding at the moment is Bataclesi, Hannah, because that is now becoming a decisive gap. She's really turned the screw over this last 100 metres or so, where they take this uh, little dog leg and then head into the hill. That 10 metre gap could well be decisive. We had a chance to talk about the course uh, with a Danish athlete, Christian Ulberg Hansen. He, he was competing in the mixed relay. He very much said he thought the race is won going into that indoor section. He wouldn't expect much of a change in positions when he come down that. Not quite seen that. We've seen a bit more drama in that closing 400 metres. But in this kind of race where it's been a head-to-head, -head, saw it with Charles Hicks and Zach Mohammed. If you can just manage to drop your opposition as you get to this indoor section. I think that gold medal could be yours. But Nadia Batacletti, so many disruptions coming in. Do you think she's perhaps run the first three laps conservatively, a little bit nervous, just trying to see how she is today? And then she could relax and, and put her foot down on this final circuit. Well, she is the real deal, isn't she, Nadia Batacletti? And to be fair, she is so supreme by going by a championship racing record. Maybe at 90% fitness, she's still better than the 14.46, a 5,000 metre best. Um, Megan Keith has run 15.53. I mean, she's over a minute slower at 5,000. That is a huge margin. She's got a great engine. His batter clutch. She moves. She's got it. She moves well. She's got a lovely, relaxed style. And she's opened up 60 metres over the last 90 seconds. I mean, that is a huge gap. Brilliant running from Megan Keith now. Surely has secured a medal. Looks to be the silver. Let's knock out our eggs, uh, chickens before they're hatched as Batter Coletti negotiates that awkward little left hand turn. Batter Coletti looking every bit the cross country specialist skipping down these hills, but she is gasping for air. She will have put in a humongous effort up that hill to bridge this gap, but it does look like it could be a fourth successive gold medal for Nadia, Nadia Batter Coletti. We've already seen a gold medal for the Italians on the mixed relay. That was sensational, it was dramatic, it came down to the closing few metres. But Nadia Batacletti has put on an exhibition round this final circuit. And in the end, it's going to be a convincing victory ahead of Great Britain and Northern Ireland's Megan Keith. Nadia Batacletti, hopefully a moment to relax and enjoy. And there's the smile and there's the wave. Big, big pressure on this young woman's shoulders and she has delivered here Piemonte La Mandria Park, a fourth consecutive gold medal for Italy's Nadia Batacletti and a inspired silver medal from last year's under 20 champion Megan Key. She gave it everything to live with Nadia Batacletti and couldn't quite handle the strength of the older athlete. But she'll be in this category for another couple of years, Megan Keith, if she so chooses and doesn't want to do the senior race. Brilliant run from her. She's given everything. Batacletti quite supreme on the day another gold medal second gold for italy 13 seconds that winning margin eventually hannah <laughs> alexandra millard yeah bill foster coached athlete with a brilliant bronze medal there she looks so excited what a fourth place for amina matug in her first race in the under 23 category and a very tired but very happy grace carson coming home in fifth place but nadia batacletti issues this year perhaps bided her time but ultimately went, uh, opened up a huge gap for the gold medal ahead of Megan Keith and a brilliant bronze for Alexandra Millard the best race of her career contributing to a very low overall score for Great Britain and Northern Ireland with team gold ahead of Italy with a team silver and France with bronze one lap to go 1309 the uh total time there after three laps Hannah so in terms of team standings three in the top six of Great Britain and Northern Ireland two for Ireland so if everything holds together well here on this final lap it does look like Great Britain and Northern Ireland could retain their team title they have much lower score than the 34 they did last year but here goes Will Barnaker of Great Britain and Northern Ireland he did this at the British trials in Liverpool a few weeks ago. He just pushed from the front, pushed and pushed and pushed, and nobody had any answer. Sam Mills, the man in fourth place, was the athlete that got closest to him on that day. And does it look like Joel Ebler Lalesso perhaps has run maybe a little bit too aggressively, too competitively in those first three laps, getting caught up racing with his teammate Axel van Christensen, who we do think 
is going to not complete the course here today, but we have Will Barnicut in his third attempt here at the European Cross Country. He competed in Lisbon back in 2019. He must have been 16 or 17. You know, lived out the pandemic, didn't get to contend a t uh, under 20 race then, but he's back here. This is his final attempt at this junior men's race, and it could be finally be a medal for Will Barnicut. But what colour? Because Nick Griggs is the European under 20, 3,000 metre champion. He's got 342, 1,500 metre speed. You've got to fancy the Irishman if this comes down to a sprint finish. Griggs and Barnicut, Ireland and Great Britain, and into the hill for the final time. Barnicut, ninth last year, having a fabulous run here, coached by Tim Eglin. What a great pairing they have turned out to be. Huge credit to coaches, of course, who prepare their athletes well for this uh, midwinter cross country. Of course, the European cross country season beginning now to adopt more and more the American collegiate model, where athletes want to peak around December, January, and then go into the indoor season. The World Cross Country Championships beckons in Bathurst in late February. Whether or not many European athletes will choose to make that long trip to Australia remains to be seen. But for these two, Hannah, this is turning into a wonderful day at the races. And I wonder who is going to push first, lose their patience and try and break the other. Or will one of them just be happy to tuck in? Lila so just really struggling on that upslope there, the Dane. I think that bronze medal battle is going to be just as fierce as the gold medal battle. And Will Barnicut for me, did not look as comfortable on these downhills as Nick Griggs did. Here goes Nick Griggs of Ireland. He's making his bid for gold. It's about getting, making sure you're coming through those gates, those doors out of the castle first, I think. Uh, we were looking at the course yesterday, apparently around about 470 metres when they exit this castle to the finish. It's technical, it's tricky. Nick Griggs at the moment getting himself ahead through these twists and turns. And Dean Casey looks like he separated himself from that bronze medal battle. Could Dean Casey leapfrog all the way back to Will Barnicut because his, his cadence and his speed has not carried him off the top of the hill particularly well. So Griggs then back out into the sunlight and he has the gap. He's got daylight between himself and Will Barnicut of Great Britain. That is a winning gap. He's gliding down the hill there so wonderfully. He dedicated his European junior title in 2021 to his older brother Josh, who had been tragically killed in a road accident one month earlier. Well, I'm sure his brother is in his mind now for this mid-Ulster athlete, coached by Mark Kirk, an 800-meter international himself back in the 80s. And uh, Nick Griggs surely now has got a winning gump margin. Just coming off this hill, probably around 200 metres to go. Nick Griggs looks over his shoulder, but he's a 342 man. He is a fast 1500 metre runner. Nick Griggs surely is going to have another gear left in this 100 metres. Will Barnicut is going to kick. He's going to give it absolutely everything. But could we see a sensational gold and bronze to Ireland? What a day that would be for the Irish team. What a start. Nick Griggs is kicking hard. Will Barnicut, you can see, he's going to drive all the way to the line, but surely he's running out of ground. Nick Griggs stumbles on the icy ground here he's weaving around will barnica in the last closing meters snatches the gold medal from nick griggs dean casey a brilliant bronze medal for ireland punches the air nick griggs hands in his head sitting there to the side of the finish country sam mills comes through in fourth Luke Birdseye in fifth. That's the gold medal for Great Britain and Northern Ireland. But Will Barnicut held his nerve. He never, ever gave up. You have to run all the way to the line. We walked down that finishing straight around about an hour ago and said, that's tricky. That's ankle turning territory. It's frozen, rutted ground and heartbreak there for Ireland and Nick Griggs. There's that confirmed result. Will Barnicut, Great Britain and Northern Ireland with a gold medal. One second ahead of Nick Griggs of Ireland. Dean Casey of Ireland holding on well for third place. This pair working together are beginning to pull away by the looks of things. One of the uh, Irish athletes there, I think that is, is looking strong. And I'm just trying to see who that was. I think it's Jane Buckley back in third place now alongside Mononen and then uh, it's the Norwegian isn't it mm. looking strong there I think it's uh, is it Haugen no, or Ostgard it's Ingeborg Ostgard and she did this last year as well she was not in a medal position then she just kept chipping away and chipping away so the Norwegian 1500 meter specialist just at the back there we can see from that graphics in Turkey 
in the team standings at the moment in the gold medal position. That would be some turnout. The Germans romped away with the gold medal last year. But they, uh, all three of their scorers are promoted up to the under-23 age group here. And see Ines Fitzgerald, she's trying to push. She's so used to just shooting to the front and staying there. And she is not having this race all her own way. Ferrero, Ferrero perhaps running a, a better judged race, building momentum through it. She was, I think she was better up the hills. I, I would expect Ferreira up this final climb to pull away from Fitzgerald and we could have another really exciting sprint finish down the home straight. Mononen's got company for the bronze medal. Uskard has got herself up alongside Ilona Mononen. Jane Buckley just staying in contention for the bronze medal, perhaps inspired by Nick Greggs and Dean Casey, Casey in the race before. That's a three-way battle for the bronze medal. So no Turks in the top five, but they are packing really well and actually leading the team race at the moment. Now Ferrero into the hill for the second time, well, the third time in effect, because, of course, the first small lap had a bit of a climb in it. This is the final hill, though, and Fitzgerald's beginning to lose ground on the Spaniard Ferrero. There's no doubt about that. Ferrero has the gap. Fitzgerald, Inez Fitzgerald, she will be in this race for, what, another two or three years yet? She's only 16, but that gap is about 10 metres and Ferrero now will lean into this slope. How well will she negotiate each of these little steps? Pretty good on that one. You've seen athletes really struggle with hands on knees on some of these sections. And there, Fitzgerald almost comes to a standstill at the top of that little climb. And the Spaniard, well, three years extra running in those legs is a very, very significant cap age gap and advantage at this uh, age you know remember hannah when you were a youngster going through the english schools 15 16 17 every year you see huge jumps in your personal best and your strength and ability and that gap's gone from 10 meters to 25 meters over the last minute well Mar maria ferrara we said she's a really accomplished runner fifth at the world juniors she was 13th here last year she's made tremendous progress and like you say, Tim, that cumulative training effect with age is brilliant. And this Innes Fitzgerald has slowed up this hill. Ilona Mononen looks like she's got herself ahead of Uskard. But is this Ferreira stretching away to a winning lead? Spain won the exhibition event back here to 1996, the very first time there was a junior women's race. And they picked up a bronze in 2004, but no individual, medal, individual medals for Spain in the women's under-20 race since that race in 2004 and we could see Maria Ferreira break that drought of individual medals for the Spanish junior women and she looks like she's full of smiles she can relax down this last 150 well she is smiling too and what a brilliantly judged effort has been she cut loose going into this final hill and has destroyed Fitzgerald in as Fitzgerald the youngster such a talent but now back in fourth place and in danger of not making it onto the rostrum as Ferreira is that a tear she's wiping away from her eye there? It might as well be because this is a truly dominant run from the 19-year-old. As you said, Hannah, fifth in the World Juniors this year, and that's up against all the African talent that can be mustered as well as the best of the rest of the world. Spanish junior 3,000 metres champion this year. She's a solid 5,000 metre performer as well. And uh, she comes now down onto the level of the flat, arms aloft. She knows she's got a massive gap behind her. Brilliant running from the Norwegian Oscar back in second place. But it's going to be a very comfortable win. One of the biggest wins of the day, I'm sure this will turn out to be, for Maria Ferrero of Spain, their first ever individual medalist at the Under-20 Women's Championship. Oscar takes second, and a really close third there is Mononen. Great running from Mononen as well for Finland, the European Junior 3000 champion last year. And those three way ahead of the rest. Great fifth place there for Jane Buckley, but Innes Fitzgerald untested really domestically, but she was incredibly tested here today. You can see her so fatigued, barely making it across the line. Fourth place for Great Britain, but the emotion for Maria Ferrero is just lovely to see. This is, I think, her final year in this age group, and that's the lovely moment you want to see. You're going to get hugs from your teammates. Arizi in the lead at the moment. He's as Gomez of Spain just sticking to him. It does look like Christian Ulberg Hansen might begin to struggle a little bit on this downhill section. It is the trials winner, Isaac Nader of Portugal, in third at the moment. But there's some big gaps opening up. Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the defending champions, I think only just about in the top ten. It's going to be all change here in the next three legs.
Well, Jesus Gomez in second place is a 334. Oh, oh, and he's gone down. He's a 333, 1500 meter runner. And he goes down. Doesn't matter how quick you are in track races. If you can't keep your feet on this uh, surface, then you're going to be in trouble. That has given a race. No relation, by the way, to Franco Racy, the great uh, Italian 1500 meter runner of generations past. But a race has a gap now of about 20 meters and uh, taken full advantage of that. Stays on his feet, struggling to stay on his feet and keep his balance. Here it is. Wow. Bang. That's quite a heavy fall. Sabatini here, a 401, 1500 meter run. She's going to be very, very hard to uh, unseat. Uh, European under 23 champion last year. 305,000 followers she's got on Instagram. Sabatini, and at the moment, she's got. Uh, couple of dozen of followers in this race I think it's tough when you're out here to be shot at in a mixed relay event like this how do you gauge your effort you know, Gab Gaia Sabatini she's got to be filled with nerves right now and that gap is closing Marcelia Tarega of Spain she's not got maybe the track credentials of those around her she's just a fourth just I say a 413 runner and a Bourgeon of France vying for their fourth consecutive silver medal but she's look at her she's just staring at down at the ground intent as a quick glance behind have I managed to say, shake off the challenge from Spain but these two I can see them certainly get, getting back on terms with Sabatini up this hill well when I saw the size of this hill Hannah and each lap being so short, I thought immediately a couple of days ago as I walked the course that there was this uh, hill would be a huge factor. You know, you can dig into it on the last lap and get a gap on people, but you can be caught on the, the downhill because some people have finished so far. Sabatini here has been reeled in by Bourguin of France. There's no doubt about that. And you can see the Spanish final leg runner as well has had a fabulous leg, Taraga. These three locked together, quite a big gap behind them. I can't see anybody else getting amongst the medals now, but who has got the legs? Who's going to judge it right? The right amount of effort on this upslope, saving enough for that fast downslope. Taraga there, you could see her trying to carry her momentum. She, she knew she could get up these hills fast. Perhaps watch Maria Ferreira, her technique was brilliant. And what a story this would be from the Spanish team. Jesus Gomez falling really hard fall on that first lap. And the team have worked tremendously well to get themselves back in, in a shot of a medal. But wouldn't that be tremendous if Spain could repeat their gold medal from 2018? And what about this French team? Three consecutive silver medals, but they've never won. Could this finally be a gold medal for France? And a Bourgeon pushing hard into this flat section. They will be absolutely flooded with lactic at this stage. Strong running from the German team in fourth place. But you'd think the medals have got to go the way of these top three. They've got to safely navigate this technical, steep downhill section. Well, the French quartet took silver medals last year behind Great Britain. Belgium took the bronze medals. Can the French get a gold this time? Can they improve one place? Spain pushing on hard now. Really good running from Rosalia Taraga of Spain. She's really attacked this downslope. She's let rip. And it may be a winning gap. The Germans back in fourth place, but way back. I don't think they're going to be amongst the medals. Ah, oh, the effort going down the hill then from Rosilia Tarago. She's giving it absolutely everything. She's taking risks. She's putting her body on the line. Gaia Sabatini is lightning fast. If Gaia Sabatini can find some momentum and some good ground, she's got around about 40 or 50 metres of technical ground left to navigate. But here goes Gaia Sabatini. She is going to try and kick down Tar Taraga of Spain. Gaia Sabatini is on the charge. This home straight has caused some drama already for Nick's Gr Nick Griggs and Will Barnicut. What will happen in this mixed relay? Gaia Sabatini trying to overhaul Spain. Spain won this title back into it 2018. Are they going to repeat? No, it is going to be a first gold medal for the host nation. Gaia Sabatini timing her effort perfectly to the line. Rosilia Taraga gave it absolutely everything. I think that Spanish team should be incredibly proud of coming back from the fall of Jesus Gomez in the first leg. But Gaia Sabatini held her nerve. She was so uncomfortable up the hill, so uncomfortable down the hill, and just left a little bit in her legs for that final 100 metres. So Italy, in the end, with the win over Spain. France picking up a bronze medal. The defending champions, Great Britain and Northern Ireland, are having to settle for fifth. A good fourth position from Germany. That could be one of their best finishes in this event. All 14 teams making it the whole way around, which is great to see.